Okay, so today we're going to go over concavity and points of inflection. And the way in which we do it in calculus is by understanding derivatives. Okay, so I'm just going to generalize uh, y is f of x. So if you want, you can say f of x, f prime of x, or f double prime, or it can just stick to y, y prime, and y double prime. Now, concavity. You may have looked at concavity before and never realized you were actually describing concavity. Um, a very simple case is when we're looking at, let's say, y equals x squared. So this is just a drawing. This is an example of something that's just concave up. Uh, let's say if we're looking at y equals negative x squared, this is an example of something that is concave down. And let's say where we're looking at y equals x cubed. This is an example where it's both concave up and concave down. Oops, I forgot my arrow for <laughs> x cubed. So um, only in the case where it changes concavity, okay, concave down to concave up, etc. That means concave up to concave down also, there is what we call a point of inflection. Please don't write point of intersection. We want to indicate that we're talking about point of inflection or an inflection point. Okay, um, so here's how we do that. So we know from examining our graph of f prime Okay, for certain intervals of x, the sine of f prime, if it's positive, that means that y is increasing. And if it's negative, that means that y is decreasing. And if it changes from positive to negative, then that means that there's some sort of relative extrema. In this case, this change from positive to negative is a relative max. Okay, so now with y double prime, if you look at its graph or you look at the graph of y prime, okay, and you try to imagine all the slopes of the tangent lines from here to understand y double prime, okay, if your uh, slopes are positive or the y double prime is positive, that means that do, 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 do. On that interval, y is concave up. And if it was negative, do, 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 y is concave down. And only when it changes concavity, like I was saying over here before, there's a point of inflection. Okay. So now... Um, I think that's basically what's being described in this paragraph, except it may be talking about increasing, decreasing. So let me go back a little bit and not talk about relative max or concavity just yet. Okay. So we said here that when y prime is positive, then y is increasing. When y prime is negative, then y is decreasing. So if y double prime is positive, that means that y prime is increasing. And if it is increasing, then this is concave up. Well, the interval, that would be concave up. And if y double prime is decreasing, I'm sorry, is negative, that means that y prime is decreasing, which means that y is concave down. Okay? So, with that being said, let me draw these like little lines here. Okay, so we get to know a lot more, not only about our original function, but if we look up y double prime or y prime, uh, we know a lot about what's going on with all of our functions. Okay, we already talked about points of inflection. 
a tangent line where the concavity changes. So it means that if there is a change between um, the slopes, okay, that means that there is a tangent line that's zero. So basically we're saying the same thing, that there's a critical point or critical number to tell us where the concavity, um, I'm sorry, where the point of inflection is, okay, the change between the concavity. All right, so we're going to do an example, and hopefully this all kind of like wraps together, okay? So let me erase this, all these kind of arrows. So maybe that's a little bit clearer. That's what we've been saying all along. And let's get started with that example. Okay. So a function f is continuous on its, sorry about the typo, its domain, negative 2 to 4. Okay, so we're graphing from negative 2 to 4. And f of negative 2 is 5. I should kind of move this down. Let me see if I could do that. Okay, this is a lot better. So negative 2 is 5. And 4, 1 is also a point. And it tells us that f prime and f double prime have the following properties. Okay, so here's our interval of x. And for f prime between negative 2 and 0, f prime is positive. So that means that the slopes of tangent lines are positive. And that also means that your function is somehow increasing. So we're going to maybe increase this until zero. At zero, it's saying here that it does not exist. So this is a critical number, okay? And from zero to two, f prime is negative. So the slope of your tangent lines would be negative. So that means that f is decreasing. So if I do from Increasing to decreasing to two. Okay, that's maybe what the graph looks like. It's a little kind of jagged, but that's okay. At x equals two, f prime is zero, so that is a critical number. Okay, from two to four, f prime is negative. Okay. So that means that it's continuing to decrease to 4, okay? And that is a point, and that is a point. And let's see if what we started to sketch from f prime makes sense because we also have f double prime. So now f double prime of x is positive from negative two to zero. So that means it should be concave up. And this does look concave up. At x equals zero, it is a critical point. And from zero to two, it is still concave up, okay? So my graph here is incorrect because what I drew is concave down. So I need to have something that is concave up. So I have to correct that. So let me do that. So this is something that is, let me do it in a red color. Hold on. Concave up. Okay. And this looks like at x equals zero, maybe a cusp or something which makes sense because remember this is a critical point. This could be because of non-differentiability and not rather that it's a relative min 
or a um, max because it's a smooth curve. It happens to be a relative max because of the non differentiability. Okay, so so far everything makes sense. So let's go and continue. So from zero to two, we made it concave up. At x equals two, it's zero. That just means it's a critical point. And then from two to four, f double prime is negative. Okay, so that means it should be concave down. And I did not have concave down, so I have to fix this one too. Okay, so I'm fixing that to be con, whoops. Oh, let me erase the x because we're fixing it. So we want it to be concave down. And I did just that. And it seems to be zero because not that there's a min or max here, but this is a point of inflection. Okay? So everything in our graph makes sense. Okay? And believe it or not, we did part three in our example, we sketched a possible graph for f. Okay, so that's how you have to read the chart slowly from left to right, one uh, row at a time, and try to make sense from what we already learned from your first derivative test and what we're trying to see um, with our knowledge of what looks like concave up and what looks like concave down and what looks like a point of inflection. Okay, so I just want to go back and answer one and two. So since we did three, it seems like we're heading backwards, number two. So number two, it says find where points of inflection occur. So once again, that could have been x equals zero, could have been x equals two, but it was indeed where x is equal to two because... the sine of f double prime of x. I don't know why I'm writing of x. That's okay, but it just seems silly. Changes sign. Now, when you talk about point of inflection, it doesn't matter if it changes sign from positive to negative or negative to positive. It's still a point of inflection. It's not as specific as having... Um, relative min or relative max. So this leads us back to number one. Okay, if you didn't copy this down, stop, pause the video like always. Make sure you get everything down. You should always have in your notebooks every lesson, every problem, every work, every answer. And the reason I said this is because we have to now do number one. So for number one, it asks about the absolute extrema. So we spoke about this being a point of inflection and this being a relative max. Now it happens to be an absolute max because our information from our table gave us the ability to sketch the graph of f. And we can see that since it was increasing over here and then decreasing, it went higher than this endpoint. So this is an absolute max right here when x is equal to zero. So if we did the extreme value theorem for this function, which we can, this would have the highest y value. Whereas the endpoint over here has the lowest, um, let me raise that here. It's getting a little sloppy. Has the lowest uh, y value. Okay, and so we're going to state that, and then we're done when x is equal to four. By the way, that was a closed circle. It's hard to close them on the screen here. It is an absolute min because it has the lowest y value. And you don't have to list what the y value is, and in a lot of cases, we don't even know what the y value is. Okay, we only knew for the endpoints 
All right. Um, so that's it. We're done. Good luck.